What values will you stand for? What legacy will you leave behind? How will you be remembered? These questions form the core of our identity, whether we're employees, entrepreneurs, or leaders. And to understand why we're different from this sea of people who have, want, and do the exact same thing as us, I delved into the different industries and how they create unique connections with their customers. And what I found was a perspective, so simple but profound, I believe it can transform our presence. If you look at the world of art, why is it that paintings continue to tell stories long after their creators are gone? You see, it's not just because they're beautiful to look at, but because of how they make people feel. How they make people feel. For instance, Picasso's Guernica is such a remarkable painting, not just because it's a very interesting painting of distorted body parts, but because of the feeling it conveys, the angst, the devastation that was caused by the Nazi bombing of Guernica in Spain. It represented a strong political message, and that's what people connected with. The Last Supper by Leonardo da Vinci was remarkable not just because it was a beautiful painting of 13 biblical characters having dinner, but because of something else. The underlying feeling of deceit, suspense, premonition, because Jesus had revealed that one of them was going to betray him. When I saw things from this perspective, it made me realize something. You and I, we are much like these paintings, aren't we? We spend a whole life of hard work creating a career, painting it masterfully with credentials and titles, but do these titles alone make us memorable? Or can we create a presence, one that not only reflects what we do, but the values we believe in, the legacy we want to leave behind, and how we want to be remembered? And for this, to understand this better, let's now look at the most prominent brands in the world and how they connect with their customers. And why I bring you to this is, if you look at all these brands, they convey a feeling that is so strong, so deeply connected with their customer that that feeling becomes synonymous with the brand. Just do it, Nike. Because you're worth it, L'Oreal. Think different, Apple. Do you see how unique each connection is? Take Nike, for instance. Just do it. Wants me to feel motivated and energized and excited, and what does all of that have to do with a shoe? I mean, it's a shoe. So while we know that these are marketing strategies, just think for a second how much work it was to make you care about what's mostly rubber and plastic. Their connection with you is about trust and loyalty, even love, because they go beyond the product and service that they provide. Their focus is not, oh, we're the number one in business or best price guaranteed. Their focus is we want you to feel something, that whatever your challenge, when you put on your Nikes, you can do anything. That was Nike. What about you? You are no different. Just like them, you represent a set of skills and services, but to create that unique presence, go to the next level and ask yourself, how do I want people to feel when they work with me? What feeling will be synonymous with me that's different from everyone else who does the same thing that I do? Now, we all have heard many extraordinary success stories of millionaires and CEOs and founders. So today, to highlight my message, I'd like to share a few stories of ordinary people with you. People who found that feeling and transformed that presence. And the first story is about a man that I wish you knew, my late grandfather, or Dadaji, as I called him. 
Dadaji was born in a small town in India, one of nine brothers and sisters. And when his father passed away at an early age, he had to take the responsibility of caring for his family. Eventually, he became an engineer, and he lived by three ideals in life. Always work with honesty and integrity. Always treat people with respect, regardless of the issue, and always be there for your team. In 1989, when Dadaji passed away, the employees of that organization felt like they had lost a father. It's been 28 years since he left us, but to this day, people remember how safe, how protected they felt underneath his leadership. His juniors then, who are now in their late 70s, still invite my mother to their family gatherings to represent Dadaji's presence. So if you ask me, that is an unforgettable legacy because he continues to live in the hearts and minds of his people. The second story is about what happens when we struggle to connect with what defines us, when we struggle to find this feeling. I was approached by a finance director a couple of months ago who had extensive experience in banking. She had taken some time off to take care of her children. Once they were older, she wanted to get back in the game, but no luck. She could not get a job however hard she tried despite all her talent. Now here's the thing. When we were having our conversation, I heard all about her experience, all about her strategies and leadership, but all I saw was a long bullet list. I couldn't get a sense of who she was, what her identity was. So we had to start from scratch. How do you want people to feel when they work with you? What feeling will be synonymous with you? And as we gradually peeled layer after layer, we discovered something incredible. She was a woman who loved being in the middle of chaos, and she wanted her team to trust her like the captain of a ship in a storm. Because in the unpredictable, stormy world of finance, she wanted to bring in her clarity, her vision, her creative energy to sail her team through those rough waters. That is what made her come alive. That is what made her an excellent director. And that's the kind of leader that a bank needs. When we were done, she said, you know, all these years, I thought I knew myself. I just never thought of myself this way. Within a month of that, she got offers from two companies. One small question can transform the way you present yourself. And the third and final story that I want to share with you is, well, about the person in front of you, because why do I care about this? So from an early age, I've been passionate about bringing ideas to life, whether through debating, storytelling, speaking, it made me feel so alive. But when I decided to pursue my career in it, that's where I made a big mistake. Because I started shaping myself on other success stories, on what other successful people and speakers were doing. So technically, I was just being a second-rate version of someone else. And despite what I loved doing, I couldn't speak at the platforms I wanted. I couldn't be with the clients that I wanted to work with. And at one point, I thought, this is not going anywhere. I might as well just quit. But the moment of epiphany came when I did a self-intervention. I had to confront myself and literally write down on a piece of paper, what is different about me? How do I want people to feel when they work with me? And that's when I realized the feelings that I want to give people. Okay, I want people to feel powerful, alive, and radiant when we work together. This is me, this is what I want to give. And once I discovered that, I rechanged and reshaped everything. My keynotes, my workshops, every time I discussed and presented myself, everything changed. And while I'm not where I want to be, I can tell you that I'm on the right path. That one question changed a lot of things in my life as well. Ladies and gentlemen, Albert Einstein once said 
that try not to be a man of success, but to be a man of value. Right now, we all have credentials that make us good at what we do. But to be remarkable, unforgettable, ask yourself, how do I want people to feel when they work with me? What is that one feeling that will be synonymous with me? Now, chances are most of us have rather ordinary lives. We don't have those crazy Kilimanjaro stories or the rags to riches transformations, but that's fine. Just because we don't have that doesn't mean that we can't have an incredible presence. Because right now, I see hundreds of inspiring stories waiting to be told. I see hundreds of identities waiting to be transformed. So all you need to do is think different and just do it, because you're worth it. Thank you. <laughs>